r slash ask reddit lawyers of reddit what is a detail that your client failed to bring up to you that completely lost you the case this is a smiling kanye it only appears once every 20,000 kanye pics very rare kanye like in five seconds or bad luck a friend of mine is a lawyer and he said that a client once turned up to court in the actual same outfit he was wearing in the burglary when the CCTV footage come up in evidence, the client looked down to himself and was like ooh crap. Your honor, ID like to plead coincidence. Sounds like reasonable doubt to me. I am actually a lawyer, but I was only watching this trial, not participating. So the case was, that woman A had hit woman B in the head with a heavy beer pint at a bar, and woman B got pretty serious injuries. The defense claimed that woman A had not hit anyone with the pint, but instead had just thrown the pint into a random direction, and it happened to hit B in the head, thus it was an accident and not a battery. Well, the prosecution had a CCTV tape from the bar, and it was shown at the trial. And the tape clearly showed in HD as A walked behind B, and smashed the pint to her head so hard that the pint shattered on impact. I looked at the defense lawyer and his jaw literally almost hit the table. The prosecutor also noticed this and asked something along. Thrown, eh? And the defense lawyer said that due to technical difficulties he couldn't get the CCTV tape open on his computer when he was reviewing the evidence. Woman A was found guilty. So yeah, I was completely dumbfounded. I can't get the file to play. What is it? Video of the incident. Oh. It'll show you didn't do it, right? Uh, yeah. Great. Next file please. I'm a public defender in an area with lots of meth use. Meth makes most people talk. A lot. So I can't tell you how many clients forget to mention that they got to the jail still high and called their mom, girlfriend, buddy on the recorded jail phone and not only confessed to the crime, but also brainstormed whatever alibi or version of events I'm relying on to defend them. Edit. I'm seeing this question a lot, so I'll add some info here. This. Is. Not. Legal. Advice. Just explaining things a bit more. Calls to a lawyer are privileged, and generally go through dedicated lines that aren't recorded, depending on the facility. Calls to family, friends, etc. through the normal phones are not privileged, are generally recorded, and can be used in court. There are usually printed signs near the phones and a recorded warning before each call that this is the case. I was in court once for a school journalism project and there was a woman in court who had been arrested for weed and crack possession when she came to bail out her boyfriend from a separate arrest. Apparently he called her from jail and told her to come bail her out and to bring some weed and crack. The guard overheard him and it was recorded on the jail phone so they arrested her when she showed up. Employment law matter. He claimed to have been unfairly dismissed over bogus performance management. The real reason. He organized via Craigslist to have someone collect a box of his cum from a children's playground. There were explicit messages from him asking what they did with it, and whether they rubbed it all over themselves. The employer provided us the messages. Edit. He was doing this on company time. Jesus. If you're going to be a creep, don't do it on company time, equipment. WTF is wrong with people? Greater than what is wrong with people? Broadly gestures at cum box. It was a typical appointment interview with the immigration committee in order to grant my client a residence permit. He was marrying a woman in my country with my country's nationality and this is a legitimate reason to be granted a residence permit. So it was a typical procedure. At least that's what I thought. The committee is bored to death and we all want to be over with it, so they ask him all typical and boring questions, like how did they meet, where they live etc. They ask these things to identify white false marriages. At some point they ask him if he was married before and he says yes, back in my home country and I am still married actually, never got a divorce. W. T. F. I was stunned. Double marriage is forbidden in my country. And he never bothered to mention this detail to me, neither to the other lawyer when we asked him. He later told me he said the truth because he was afraid to lie in front of a committee. An honest and stupid man. I got all my money though, yet we had to find another way to gain a residence permit. I felt a too real shudder of recognition reading your story. So many times I've asked a client the exact same question like five different ways just to make sure their answer remains consistent. Just to have them answer in the exact opposite way before the judge or decision maker during the hearing. 
Like duck why even retain me if you're not even going to stick to the plan you're paying me money for. One of the unsolved mysteries of life, eternally. A defendant was written a cell phone ticket while driving and defended himself. Your honor I was not using a smart phone while driving. I was actually using a flip phone. Guilty. Case as a paralegal. Negligence case, client argued that a lack of street lights and a cyclist he couldn't see was responsible for him hitting a wire pole. Upon discovery, the first respondent's report indicated that they found the driver in the driver's seat, pants down, with porn playing on the phone. Wasn't difficult to figure out who was negligent at that point. Your honor, if the cable repairman had simply fixed the cable in accordance with professional standard practices, my client would have had no other recourse but to keep his ostrich in the corral on the evening in question. Not a lawyer. My parents had a long messy divorce that took two. Five years in court. My dad claimed that my mother was trying to take 100% of everything based on a settlement offer she sent him. He failed to mention to his lawyers that her initial offer also sent to his previous lawyers was a 60-40th split and she only sent that 100% one in response to an equally unreasonable offer from him. As soon as she could prove the initial offer was reasonable the judge just basically ruled on everything according to that first offer. His lawyers were so angry because they built their entire case around the idea that she was the unreasonable one. I think it was something to do with arguing that she was not sending genuine settlement offers, I'm not sure why. His goal wasn't to win, it was to prolong the battle. But the original offer exposed him in the lie in front of the judge which made the rest of the process go very quickie. This literally sounds like my dad. My mum's lawyer used to tell her that the rulings from our case were some of the most unfair rulings, on his side, ever. He was paying child support, decided it was too much, got some external agency to reevaluate. Turns out he was paying too little. Thanks for showing me that there are more crazy dads out there. Edit. Thanks to everyone for sharing their stories, it's nice to know you're not the only one with a bat crap crazy parent. That he filmed his offenses for his YouTube channel. The cops didn't even know, a witness brought it up on day 3 of a trial. It was a nice quick change of plea that afternoon. Client in family law matter lied to me about using meth. Then used meth with the child in the room and the ex got footage of it on the nanny cam and then made excuses about why they couldn't do a drug test, then blamed me when they lost custody. Despite the fact that they didn't show up to appointments or return my call so I couldn't prepare any court material. I dumped the client after that and left family law. What kind of law do you do now? I do civil law with a focus on human rights now. When I did family law it practically sucked my soul from me. Safe to say I'm a much happier person now that I'm not dealing with people about harming their children and using them as pawns. Not a lawyer yet, but I clerked for a DOS office throughout law school. Obviously we don't have clients, but I'll never forget this kidnapping case I worked on. It involved two Asian male defendants who were both the same age and looked relatively similar. Witness is on the stand and is asked to identify where the defendant who pushed an Uzi into his face is seated. It's clear the witnesses is having trouble differentiating the defendants. In a true moment of brilliance, one defendant raises his fucking hand and basically points to himself like right here bud. Hands down the dumbest crap I'd ever seen. I thought his defense attorney was going to have a brain aneurysm. He was probably also part of the Cobras in high school. For people who don't get the joke. There was an Askredit thread the other day asking about school scandals, I think. One commenter said a group of people calling themselves the Cobras would go around the school graffiti in their name on everything. Everyone had a good idea who the guys were but the school board couldn't prove who it was. Class photo day came around and announcements were going off calling people to have their photo taken. An announcement for the Cobras came over the system and some dumbasses actually showed up to have their photo taken. Something like 13 of them. Not a lawyer, law student, and not exactly what you asked for, but I feel like it fits here anyways. We read about a criminal case in which there wasn't enough evidence to convict the suspect, so the suspect was not guilty due to reasonable doubt, and he responded thank you judge, ill never do it again. DA went into appeal and dude got convicted. Had a woman with an expensive fur coat and she claimed that the laundry ruined it. It was kinda ruined but the laundry claimed those stains were already there. 
Judge ordered an expert opinion lab, and the fur coat had traces of cocaine and other illegal drugs all over it. There was a raid at her place then and her husband got convicted because they found several kilogram of drugs. So, um, dry cleaning your coat doesn't get all residue out? Asking for a friend. I'm not a lab guy but it seems like some stains can be traced if you are going to a crappy laundry. I am still a law student and this happened during my first internship at a court. A girl among other people was charged with drug possession but because she had thrown away the drugs and the police couldn't prove that she bought or owned the drugs BC it could have been one of the other people as well who still had drugs on them. The judge ruled in dubio pro reo, he then asked if she wants to say, add something and this girl asked if she can get her drugs back. The defense attorney looked like he was about to get a heart attack. Edit. For those wondering I know what in dubio pro reo means but I wasn't sure if they used the term in other countries and tried to explain it if not. This happened in Germany. I really don't want to believe anyone is that stupid. Sadly yes. I've heard of people calling the police for getting ripped off in their meth purchase. Unfair dismissal case. The client claimed to have been dismissed without reason or following procedure. After we had started the case, it comes out that not only was he given three written warnings but he was also called in for a disciplinary hearing before his dismissal. Don't lie to your lawyer. Similar to a doctor, I feel like not telling your lawyer everything can just hurt you. I was involved in a hit-and-run car accident. My leg was pretty mangled. However the driver of the car was caught. Turns out he was a rich kid who was driving his mum's convertible porch. Denied all knowledge of hitting me etc. At the trial the prosecutor asked him how long he had been driving to which he answered, do you mean how long have I been driving legally or illegally? The judge then went nuts asking why and when he had been driving illegally. His defense team sat Dion in their chairs and shook their heads. Needless to say he lost the case. Interestingly he died a year later by drowning. He had hired speed boat and holiday, flipped it over and drowned. Turns out he was drunk at the time. Karma can be a cunt. I can picture how the kid thinks he's tough by saying the exact same things to his friends and that reply just become a habit to him anytime anyone asked about him driving. Sounds like my brother, TBH. Not my client, but the son of the opposing party, and presumably the party himself, lied about being blind to make himself seem more sympathetic as a witness. We didn't know either until he took the witness box, their counsel asked him to take the oath, and he picked the card up and read it. That was the cherry on top of a series of ridiculous events. The judge dismissed the whole thing in our client's favor shortly after. I was a trainee at the time, but my boss, who was in her late 60s then, said it was the most ridiculous case she'd ever handled. Greater than and he picked the card up and read it. I was expecting he easily walked up or sat down, not that he was stupid enough to actually read something out. I love reading through this thread at all the stories and thinking which of them, if they wrote them into a television show, would be laughed off the air as too ridiculously made up. This one is a prime example. LOL.